This is a video response for God Lowdown. Yes, I can agree atheism is a view on gods, specifically that there is no reason to believe in them or even consider the concept valid. At 2 minutes and 15 seconds in is where you start to go wrong. These are things that are likely to be true of atheists, but not definitive characteristics. On your first proposition, prior to the questions, I would disagree. There is actually an infinite number of answers to that. None of your three answers are right, but three is true of the multiverse in string theory. Defining theism as non-belief in two of your answers doesn't work. That is because it is defined by beliefs which indirectly include a belief in your first answer. All other possibilities are not believed in due to them being mutually exclusive with the believed in first answer. So trying to define it by lack of belief in an infinite array of possibilities is not valid because disbelief in them is not definitive. The disbelief comes about only because of their invalidity being necessarily true by implication of their definitive belief. Let me now answer your questions, but first preface it with this. Atheism says nothing about any of these questions. Atheism has no more to say about these questions than existentialism has to say about the speed of light in a vacuum. Atheists are very likely to accept things as true only by way of logical reasoning and empirical evidence, which is exemplified by the scientific method. Now, keep in mind there are no absolutes with empiricism but it allows one to be as near to certainty as is possible. Answer 1. Matter comes from energy, the forces come from particles, albeit a theoretical one in the case of gravity. These are accepted by theists and atheists alike, so I see no reason to elaborate further on that part of it. The beginning of the universe is a quantum event. It starts the expansion of space-time. This is because of the quantum uncertainty principle. Anything smaller than a Planck length and shorter than a Planck time only exists as a probability. The universe would have been infinitely small, so without time or space, it has the probabilities of being any possible size. Absolute nothing is also impossible, although everything will balance out to nothing when taken in total. Since this is before time, there can't be a cause. Cause and effect come into existence with time, which is part of space. The universe is mostly empty space, and that empty space actually contains negative energy, so technically nothing actually got created. For more information, you should seek out an expert in quantum theory. Answer 2. This is easy. Thermodynamics. That answers the main part of your question. The fundamental forces provide the rest of the answer. Answer 3. There is no such thing as objective morality. However, that doesn't mean there can't be certain subjective standards. I'm sorry to be so vague, but this is a very long answer. In fact, I did a whole video about it. So, please watch that for the complete answer. Um, if you just look in my uh, back catalog, scroll down a little ways. I think I did it maybe in April or so, May, something like that. Now, again, <clears throat> these things have nothing to do with atheism. They are also not actually beliefs. These things are accepted as true because of logical reasoning and empirical evidence. Now, if you would like to define belief as anything accepted as true, then we have two radically different sorts of beliefs, hence the reasoning for me not defining it as such. 
on one side you have people who accept things only based on evidence. Such people are atheists, however, not all atheists are necessarily like this. It's not definitive. On the other side, you have the religious who hold some beliefs based entirely on faith with no basis in evidence. So, if you want to use this messy definition, you end up conflating two vastly different things. So, I prefer to define belief as things people think are true without any evidence. Many atheists do have these kinds of beliefs. They don't have them in regard to gods, of course, but they may have them about other things. Now, rationalists, on the other hand, have no beliefs and only accept things as true based on logical reasoning and empirical evidence. Rationalists are atheists, but there are plenty of atheists who aren't rationalists. I have even met theists who are rational on everything but their belief in God. It's simply because they were raised to believe in that, but otherwise are skeptical and require evidence. So, to summarize, I think the entire problem is making assumptions about likely but non-definitive characteristics of atheists, as well as conflating two entirely different types of belief based on two entirely different usages of the word.